Giardiasis is a chronic intestinal protozoal infection seen around the world in most mammals, many birds, and people too. As such, it is a zoonosis. Infection is common in dogs, cats, ruminants, and pigs, and highest rates of infection are seen in young animals. Giardia species are found in mice, amphibians, and warm-blooded vertebrates. The species complexes infecting vertebrates includes G. artiae and G. psittaci from birds, G. microti from muskrats and voles, and G. duodenalis, also known as G. intestinalis and G. lamblia, which has a wide mammalian host range. As flagellate protozoa, trophozoites, giardia attach to the brush border of the intestine, usually the proximal small intestine. Upon incestation in the small or large intestine, cysts then pass in the feces where it is infective and can survive for weeks in the environment. The prepatent period is generally three to ten days. Cyst shedding may be continual over several days and weeks, but is often intermittent, especially in the chronic phase of infection. Within this scheme, obviously, giardia transmission is via ingestion of materials contaminated by feces. Only small numbers of cysts are needed to initiate infection. High humidity facilitates survival of cysts in the environment, and animal overcrowding facilitates transmission. A not uncommon means by which humans become infected is through drinking untreated or unfiltered water while hiking, camping, or even accidentally swallowing a bit of water while swimming or wading. Giardia is present in many waterways, and it should be assumed that all water is contaminated and needs to be treated. Cold water from a mountain stream looks enticing, but don't fall for it. Symptoms may take one to two weeks to develop, but may continue for six weeks, leading to diarrhea, stomach cramps, nausea and or vomiting, flatulence, and greasy stools. Ensure that water is free of giardia parasites by using one of these three methods. First, filter the water with a less than one micron pore size filter. Second, boiling water for at least one minute at a full boil. And third, treating with chlorine or iodine according to directions. Gross intestinal lesions are seldom evident. Giardia causes an increase in epithelial permeability and an increase in the number and activation of T lymphocytes in the gut. This leads to shortening of the brush border microvilli and causes a reduced absorption of water, electrolytes, and nutrients. Together with decreased activity of the small intestinal brush border enzymes, the host suffers from malabsorptive diarrhea and malnutrition. Reduced activity of lipase and increased production of mucin leads to steatorrhea and mucous diarrhea. Clinical signs are often normal. However, giardia infections in small animals may manifest only as chronic weight loss and chronic or intermittent diarrhea, particularly in the young. Feces appears soft, pale, malodorous, and contains mucus and fat. Watery diarrhea is unusual, and fecal blood is usually not observed. However, an animal may vomit. Differential diagnoses include virtually all other causes of malabsorption and maldigestion, such as exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. In young ruminants, giardiasis can result in diarrhea unresponsive to antibiotics or coccidiostats. It should be suspected when feces are mucoid and pasty and animals less than six months of age show reduced weight gain. How is giardia diagnosed? A saline smear of feces may show the modal oval trophozoites. Unlike yeast or trichomonads, they have a double nucleus. Fecal cyst, 9 to 15 by 7 to 10 microns, can be concentrated by the centrifugation flotation technique using zinc sulfate. Identification can be facilitated by iodine staining. Because of intermittent excretion, three fecal examinations should be performed over three to five days. Specific detection can be enhanced by immunofluorescent and commercial ELISA techniques optimized for the species of interest. There are no FDA-approved drugs for treatment of giardiasis in dogs and cats in the United States. However, fenbendazole has been approved for use in Europe and is used off-label in the U.S. 
It has been shown to be safe even in pregnant and lactating animals. A praziquantel, parental, and febantel combination has been used for three days. Extra label use of metronidazole for five days is effective in eliminating Giardia species from about two out of three infected dogs, but may be associated with vomition and neurological side effects. Combination or sequential strategies, being sure to bathe the animals to remove cysts, have also been tried. Currently, no drug is FDA approved for the treatment of Giardia infection in ruminants, so off-label users should consult with the Food Animal Residue Avoidance Database for guidance on withdrawal times. Fenbendazole and albendazole significantly reduce cyst excretion and clinical improvement in calves. Paramomycin for five days was also found to be highly efficacious in calves. For production animals and group housed domestic animals, management is the key to control of Giardia. Cysts can cause infection and reinfection, particularly if housing is crowded. Giardia cysts are immediately infective when passed in the feces and survive in the environment. Cysts are a source of infection and reinfection for animals, particularly those in crowded conditions. Feces should be removed from the environment daily, and dogs and cats bathe to remove cysts from the hair coat. Disinfection with quaternary ammonium and steam or boiling water can inactivate cysts in the environment. To facilitate efficacy, solutions should be left for greater than five minutes before rinsing. Yards and animal runs cannot be disinfected and should be considered contaminated for at least a month after removal of the last infected animal. Cysts may be inactivated by allowing the surface to dry thoroughly after cleaning. In summary, Giardia is a protozoan seen worldwide that causes chronic intestinal infection in most mammals, many birds, and people. Infection is common in dogs, cats, ruminants, and pigs, and highest rates of infection are seen in young animals. Affected domestic animals can be treated with antiprotozoal agents, often in combination, but proper hygiene constitutes the best approach to animals in group housing.